So you got to hear my miracle story if you're in church on Sunday. Any of you have miracle stories? I'm just curious. You mean you don't mean the one I told you? No, yeah, <laughs> somebody else. I think my mom's last year was a miracle. She um, had fallen and broken her hip, and while she was the surgery to replace the hip was successful, but being 97, she started having all these complications. She wasn't eating, and so when I went there, she still wasn't eating, and she was. She was really looking, having some really bad nights. And the doctor called my brother and said that they thought she was shutting down and he was going. And so we, and she seemed to say she didn't want to struggle. So we said, okay, we'll take you off medicines and stuff. And they brought in a person, the hospice person, to talk to us. So it looked really, you know. And I remember praying, Lord, just let her pass in her sleep quietly and comfortably so she would, you know. Well, she perked up. <laughs> Power of my prayer goes off with it. <laughs> but I mean, it was really kind of a miracle because the doctors really thought she was not going to. Because I said, you have to move her to another facility for hospice. And they said, oh no, we can handle it. So it made it sound like they thought for a couple of days she would be gone. Well, she celebrated her 98th birthday in October. <laughs> she's walking with pain and she's still living alone. So to me, that's kind of a miracle for somebody that age. <laughs> yes. My son, when he was in first grade, had a, a, a very strange eye virus that would, the, the virus was no cure and it leaves permanent scarring on your eye, on your cornea. So you see a round scar and it fractures light. And um, so the doctor had, so I turned it over to a very close-knit friends, group of friends of mine who are just real prayer warriors. I gave that to them to pray about. And the orders were that any time he was in pain, I was to rush him to the doctor immediately. Don't make an appointment, just go. So he was in pain, and I gathered him up. He had to wear sunglasses all the time. You know, first graders, that makes you a, an oddball at school. <laughs> rush him to the doctors, and I got to the doctors, and I could not for the life of me remember the name of the doctor. <laughs> could not remember. And I looked at the name, and I thought, maybe it's that one. So they sent me, they, they sh and it was a different, it was a very young doctor very aggressive, and he said, we'll take care of this. Well, the other doctor had said, if you treat it with heavy medicine, the virus will build up an immunity, you have no place to go, so you start very gently. He gave Eric some kind of eye medicine. We really were very careful and diligent in how we did that. The prayer warriors are praying. The virus went completely away, no scars whatsoever. And as far as I am, will always be concerned, that absolutely was a miracle, because that was not the problem. So, that's a miracle. Our oldest son was on an assignment with a co-worker in Mexico City. And things weren't going well. And they were robbed by the federale wannabes, guys in uniforms that aren't really supposed to wear the uniforms. They had all kinds of incidents. So they were told to abandon the assignment and come back. They were driving back. And I'm not sure if it was two hours or 200 miles short of the border coming up, going into Texas. And we had known there were problems. So we had approached our small group at that time, and they were praying with us. Our family was all praying. Uh, we had approached Pastor Gary Katsopoulos, who was still here at that time. We told him about it because it wasn't something we could put on a yellow card. Right. So he shared it with the staff. This was all coming about on Friday night that we had heard about it. Monday was when they drove back to the U.S. And they were stopped on the highway. It was either two hours or 200 miles. I forget the specific. They were stopped by highway robbers. And the practice at that point was... They held a 10-inch blade to his co-worker's throat and circled the, it was a, a pickup with a camper yeah. shell. Uh, they circled the truck and they would slash a tire. Then they would let the party go, knowing that down the highway, that tire's gonna go flat and they're gonna be at the mercy of the robbers. Well, that happened, they let them go, they drove, they didn't stop until they crossed the border 
And it was El Paso, or no, it was farther down in Texas, I forget. Anyway, they crossed into Texas, and the tire went flat on the U.S. side. What had happened was the blade broke off and sealed the tire. He called us Monday night, a little before 10 o'clock, to tell us, he said, I'm on the U.S. side of the border. I can spit across into Mexico. We're safe. That night, I called all of the family to let them know. In the morning, I called one member of the small group, and the word was spread, and I called Pastor Gary. And the following Sunday, we did fill out a card, something about being thankful for the safe return of our son from a, an assignment out of the country. And Pastor Gary happened to be reading the cards that Sunday. And he read it the way I wrote it, and then he said, and the miraculous way in which he was returned. Anybody want to go to Mexico? No, he will never go to Mexico again unless he is a witch or a I was thinking if he was riding with my wife 200 miles, two hours, all the same. <laughs> 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 Another miracle story, yeah, miracle, I'm still alive. <laughs> Other miracle stories. I guess I have one. Yeah. Barbara and I had a, uh, a small travel trailer. This is probably back in the 1974. 72 or 3. Doesn't matter. And we were traveling with it in uh, central northern California. And uh, we decided that we'd uh, wanted to, we were over in the, in the, in the gold country. And uh, on the west side of the Sierras, we decided we wanted to go over in the east side. So we happened to start up, uh, I forget the name of the number of the highway, but it's the one that goes over Sonora Pass. And I'd never, never driven over Sonora Pass before. <clears throat> and so I, we, we started out and, and uh, uh, we were towing the trailer, of course. And to make a, a long story short, we got uh, to a place where uh, the road started to get pretty steep. And so the uh, temperature started to indicate uh, overheating in the engine. So I pulled over in the rest stop for a little while and we let the engine cool down and, and uh, just had a meal or a snack or something and then we started up again and we hadn't gone more than a couple of miles when there was a big big, big yellow sign with black letters that said Sonora Pass Ahead, Trucks and Trailers Not Recommended. <laughs> and so I thought well I can always just leave it in low gear and we'll get over there alright. Well just before we got to the summit, white smoke started to pour out from under the car. And I had no idea what, was, what it was. Probably turned out it was probably transmission fluid. But honest, this is a, we got to the summit and the car was just barely moving and it was in low gear and I had my foot pedal to the metal. And, and uh, we got to the, got to the summit and this is literal, the car was headed downhill and the trailer was still going uphill. It was right there and I stopped and got out and I wanted to check the engine oil and the transmission fluid and the fluid seemed to be okay. So I said, well, we'll just go downhill. And so we headed downhill and it was quite steep on the eastern slope. The eastern slope is quite a bit steeper than the western slope of the Sierras, if you've ever driven over there. And of course, the road going down is a switchback on the Sonora Pass Road. And started going down, and I pushed hard on the brakes, and harder and harder, and the vehicle was gaining speed. I could not keep the, even down on low gear, it would not, had no trailer brakes. It was a very small trailer but I had no trailer brakes on it. <clears throat> so just as the brakes failed, I was able to, we were able to go around the last hairpin turf and the road leveled out. And I think it was a miracle. 